Hello world, Constantinos here. Welcome to a new video in which we will aim to demystify and analyze one of the most important concepts in Android development, Android context. This is such a core component of Android development that we face it immediately after writing our first lines of code and we keep facing it ever since, all the time everywhere. From what I've seen, most developers learn how to use it by experience, this means that they kind of get the idea behind it, they manage to use it, but come to think of it, few of them really understand its ins and outs, or can explain it to a non-Android engineer. I will go first and confess, I belonged in this category for a long time, before I decided to change that and learn more about context. What about you? Do you really know what context is? In fact, let's make an experiment. Pause the video here and write down how you would explain context to a software engineer that has never seen Android code before. I am asking you to do this so that you will end up with questions that this video will hopefully address. Go ahead and pause now. You're back? Great. Let's talk. As mentioned in the beginning, context is such a core concept that it is unavoidable that there would be misconceptions bad practices, and uh, this effect is multiplied by the fact that context is an unfortunate design choice by the Android framework. I will explain why. My first step when trying to dive deeper in how a part of a framework or system works is to read the definition, the official documentation, and then draw the architecture schematically so that I can get my own opinion of the system. Let's forget tutorials, let's forget Stack Overflow questions of what is context. And let's see what Google has to say about context in its definition. As always, we can go to the Android developer's website, or like any normal human being that's bored to type uh, the developer site in the bar, we use Google for context definition and let her take us there. Okay, here it is. Interface to global information about an application environment. This is an abstract class whose implementation is provided by the Android system. It allows access to application-specific resources and classes, as well as app calls for application-level operations such as launching activities, broadcasting, and receiving intents, etc. So we can highlight some key takeaways from this. First of all, it's an abstract class, therefore an abstraction. This is important. Second, the abstraction is implemented and provided by the system, so we get a context through the Android framework. And third, it allows access to app-specific resources. The third point sums up the answer to when someone asks, what does context do? Well, it simply allows us to get access to application-specific resources and classes. Okay, perfect. We get the definition down, and that is a very important first step we now know that it's an interface, and we also found a good definition to what we basically already knew, but might have had trouble articulating if someone were to ask us, tell me more about context. But of course, we cannot stop here. This is going to be a deeper dive. Context is basically a bridge between our application and the system, an interface that allows us to access resources, a database, navigation to other activities, or getting a color resource or a string resource, and even showing toasts, and much, much more. But first things first, how do we obtain the context? We said that it's an interface and the system provides its implementation, but if you're like me, you want to know more. Who creates this implementation behind the scenes? The answer is something called AMS, which stands for Activity Manager Service. Activity Manager Service is a system process provided by Android to manage the running status of activity and other components. Where, when our application starts up, AMS will communicate with the app and provide information that is translated into our context and is basically our gateway, our gateway into the system, but in a controlled way. It is provided by AMS, taking into consideration the application permissions and the different types of context that our app needs. That is exactly why regular Java classes 
do not give developers a way to access context, but activities, the application class, and other Android components do. So basically, a regular class that has context is a component. Therefore, context is our bridge into the system and resources along with the permission access level that we can have depending on our application and place within it. Next, let's continue with one of the most common questions. Why do we have so many contexts? What is the difference between context, get application context, get base context? Let's see the actual hierarchy of context. Like we, like we said, context is an abstraction, so we have to see what different realizations it can have. From the Android source code, we can create this diagram. As you can see, top level is the context, that is the abstract class, our interface. On the second level, we have context impl, which is implementing all context abstract functions, and then context wrapper inherits from context, but does not implement it. It wraps all functions from context and uses context impl class implementation. Context impl is the real implementer of context and the information credential passed from the AMS that we talked about before, this is assigned to context wrapper using the decorator pattern. Context wrapper class has an attached base context function. Its behavior is making sure the context is attached only once. Then moving into the third level, context theme wrapper, which as its name implies, applies the theme from application or activity. You know, the one that we define as Android theme in Android manifest XML file. Since both application and service both do not need the theme, as there is no UI, they inherit directly from context wrapper. When a new activity, application, or service are initiated, a new context implementation object will be created each time, which implements the original context abstraction. So now the different contexts start making sense. The basic difference between contexts is whether they expose a theme or not. But there are more differences that are far more important than that. I mentioned earlier in this video that context design choice is problematic. Of course, there are tables floating around that show us what its context is capable of. Here's one from Stack Overflow. It's not important to memorize this, since after understanding what context really is and how it, its hierarchy works, we can pretty much derive their capabilities on the spot. But let's see the real problems. First of all, subclasses of context have different scopes, since application and activity have different scopes. So when passing an activity context into an object that outlives it, instead of the application context, this can be a memory leak. Next, as we have seen in the video Favor Composition Over Inheritance, which I will have linked right below the like button, abusing inheritance can be a bad practice. And earlier than that, we had covered the solid principles, out of which the Lisk of Substitution principle manifests the rules that we must follow if we are to extend the type. The fact that Android developers need to think about which subclasses of context work for each specific use case is a clear violation of the Lisk of Substitution principle. Also, the single responsibility principle states that a class should only have one reason to change, one responsibility. Context is a God class and clearly violates this principle as well. But not all is dark though. Those design choices have some advantages as well. Most of those come down to one word, convenience. It's very handy to be a context when you are an activity, since you can pass this when it uh, needs an interface that needs the context. Second, the decorator pattern protects context implementation and context wrapper. When context impl needs to change, context wrapper will most likely remain unaffected. And third, having the same context abstraction between service, application, and activity allows different use cases and scenarios to same the same interface with the system. I want to focus on the different contexts a bit more. This is a major source of frustration for developers, especially the more inexperienced ones, as passing their own context will create bugs and, and leaks and crashes. 
let's begin with the application context. Application is a global context, since there is only one application class in our Android application. It can access the package information and other resource information of the application. There are two ways to get application context. Context dot get application context or activity dot get application. But what's the difference between these two methods? Well, none. They are the same. Try it out, print them and see. Why do we need two methods for the same things? Well, that's a good question. My guess is convenience again, as get application can be more intuitive. Then moving on to activity. Activity inherits from context theme wrapper and is a context object with a theme. It can be accessed by this from within an activity and its scope is limited within the life cycle of that activity. Also, fragments under that activity share the same context. Service inherits from context wrapper and can also use the this keyword, but unlike activity, a service has no user interface, so it does not need a theme. Finally, what is base context? You probably have seen the method get base context when you are within an activity. This is actually the base object in the context wrapper, that is context impl, which is also the real implementation of the context interface. So, that was a lot to take in, but I really hope this video has helped you get a better grasp of context and actually make you understand its different uses instead of memorizing by experience. The two most important things to remember, different contexts have different scopes. Be careful with that. And second, activity context has a theme. So to start a new activity, for example, you need the activity context. If you pass an application context in the start activity intent, you will simply lose your app theme. But passing that context to an object that will outlive the activity is a surefire way to a memory leak, and this will cause crashes. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will be available in my social links and comments below in case you want to add something or ask anything. See you in the next one.